Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to raise a complex number to the 12th power. I'm also going to show you the result numerically. Okay, we have a number in standard form which is A plus BI, by the way that's the name of this channel, and we're raising it to the 12th power. So definitely there's more than one way to do it and the first method, which is the most brute force method, is going to be using the binomial theorem. Now think about it for a minute. If you are raising a plus b to the 12th power, you're going to end up with something like 12 choose 0, a to the power 12, and then 12 choose 1, a to the 11 times b, and then 12 choose 2, a to the power 10, b squared, so on and so forth, until you hit to b to the power 12 at the end. And there's a symmetry, binomial coefficients, combinatorics, so on and so forth. So many other stories, right? This expression has 13 terms. So good luck with that. You're going to have to raise i to different powers, numbers with different powers, and that's going to be gigantic. Crazy. Something that you should never do, but it is a method, right? Okay, great. So now we're going to be exploring something else. So instead of raising it to the 12th power, which is something that we, a lot of times, we do with polynomials, raising it to maybe second power, third power, until we get something nice, and then I can build off of that, right? So here's what I'm going to take a look at. And I'm not going to number the methods, so hopefully you can. Uh, I'm going to start by setting this equal to um, x. So x is a root of a polynomial equation. I'm going to try to find that polynomial equation with real coefficients, okay? How can I do that? Well, one way to do it is you can just subtract square root of 3 from both sides and then square both sides. That's not going to get rid of all the radicals, but it's going to give us something helpful. So let's go ahead and square both sides. That gives us x squared minus 2 root 3x plus 3 equals 9i squared, which is negative 9. Great. I didn't get rid of all the radicals, but I'm pretty close. This is the only one I need to get rid of. Let's go ahead and bring the negative 9 over here. So that becomes x squared plus 12. And we'll isolate the radical. And square both sides one more time. Right? Okay. Let's see how this goes. From here, we should be getting something like x to the 4th plus 24x squared plus 144 equals 2 root 3 squared is going to be 12x squared. And if I bring the 12x squared over, that's going to give me 12x squared plus 144 equals 0. Great. So what am I going to do with this quartic equation, right? Well, we kind of got some type of relationship. At least I do know that, okay, x to the fourth can be written as negative 12x squared minus 144. So if you're trying to raise x to the 12th power, I could just write it as the fourth power and then to the third power, but fourth power was written as a square, so I could just square it. Let's square x, which is root 3, plus 3i. And then if you square both sides, we're going to do a lot of powers here. That's going to become x squared equals 3 plus 6 root 3i minus 9. And then x squared is just going to be negative 6 plus 6 root 3i. And then I can find x to the fourth easily because I know x to the fourth can be written like this, right? And then I can go ahead and plug it in. Negative 12 times this minus 144. So this is going to give me a positive 72. That's going to give me a negative 72 at the end, right? And minus 72 root 3i. All right, so I started off with something root 3 plus 3i, and now I got this. How is that helpful, right? Well, I can try to raise this to the third power, but that's going to be a lot of work. As you can see, there's probably an easier way to uh, do this, but I didn't really get anything that helpful. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go with the next method. x equals root 3 plus 3i, and I want to find x to the power 12 from here. So I'm going to do the following. Let's go ahead and write this in polar form, okay? Because the polar form is actually going to give us an idea about what this number is all about. And polar form can be written uh, as r e to the power i theta, where theta is the angle or the argument, and r is the modulus or the absolute value, okay? So we can basically express a complex number like this, and that's going to make an angle, which is theta, 
and then r is going to be the distance between the number z and in this case it's x and origin okay this is the real axis this is the imaginary axis and so on and so forth so how do you find r and theta right well here's the thing to find r we're going to use the absolute value of this number absolute value of x is going to be the absolute value of square root of 3 plus 3i three so we're going to square root of square root of 3 squared which is 3 plus 9 that's going to be 2 root 3 so that's r and theta actually can be found by a couple different things I can use for root 3 plus 3i three let's say this is x I can kind of look at tangent theta tangent theta is going to be 3 over root 3 which is actually root 3 but there are two angles whose tangent is root 3 right and those angles are one of them is I think 60 degrees which can be written as pi over 3 and the other one remember the uh, tangent is positive in the third quadrant then in this case you're supposed to add pi to it and that's going to give you 4 pi over 3 so there are two angles but remember this is the third q this is the first q quadrant right uh, and looking at this number with the real and imaginary parts they're both positive so our number cannot be in the third quadrant now if you don't like this method you can just go ahead and plot this as root 3 plus 3i so it's going to look something like this okay root 3 plus 3i and then look at this angle obviously this is going to be a 30 60 90 triangle make sense that way you can also find it pretty easily and of course if it's in a different quadrant it's going to be even easier because you can use this as a reference angle make sense so my number now can be written as which is 3 plus root 3i can be written as r times e to the power i times pi over 3 i pi over 3. Now raising both sides to the 12th power would be super duper easy because all you have to do is apply the Moivre's formula or just exponentiate it. This is going to give you the following 2 root 3 to the 12th power times e to the power. So what do you do to the exponents? These exponents are multiplied and 3 goes into 12 4 times so it's going to be 4 i pi. And guess what? e to the power 2 pi i n is going to give you one all the time because this is just unity right 2 pi or multiples of 2 pi is always going to produce one because if you think about it you'll get it okay that's the number so this will be one so i don't really have to worry about it the answer is 2 root 3 to the 12th power how do you find it that's such a large number right yes but it would help if you just square this once and then raise it to the sixth power next 2 root 3 squared is going to be 12 so the answer is going to be 12 to the sixth power what is 12 to the sixth power well you can write it as 2 to the sixth power times 6 to this or you can do the prime factorization so many ways to express it 2 squared times 3 to the 6 this is going to be 3 to the 6 times 2 to the power 12. 2 to the power 12 I think is 4096. I don't know 3 to the 6 that should be wait a minute I do know it. It is actually uh, 729 right isn't it? Because 3 cubed is 27 27 squared is 729. Okay so I kind of know some numbers and this was what 4096 and their products are going to all come on. I don't think I'm going to multiply those so let's go ahead and uh, use our cheat sheet. Yay! Input is this and the output is going to be 2,985,984. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.